And welcome back to another episode of Top Docs today. We're going to be talking about a detour from our usual journey. We're going to be exploring the world beyond the furry as we peel back the layers and share more about our personal aspirations outside of this amazing community. So sit back, get cozy, and let's get ready for a very special journey into the minds and dreams of your favorite Top Dog podcasters. I'm Fiction Boy. I'm Stream Architect. And as you guys can tell, Whiplash is not going to be in this episode. He partied a little too hard and got sick. Oh, the poor <laughs> thing. It was. Well, yeah, he he had a party with his with, like his friends, but it's fine. It's okay. It happens. It happens to the best of us. Of course it does. But you know, Stream, I want to point out something. You and I have a lot of backgrounds about what we do. It's not just us being furries. There's the, you and I have a very colorful resume, right? Well, we sure do. <laughs> like for example, I saw a video with you flying a thing. What was that thing called? Oh, my paramotor. Yes. But yeah. Tell. Why don't we talk about that? Because I I saw the videos of you going across these like these hills, and I remember I was like, oh, that is so cool. And when that happened, I saw like people like that were on top of the hill. Yeah, the top of a mountain, to be more precise. Oh, I, I thought you said it was, It looked more like hills, but I guess that was from my peripheral that it just looked like hills, not more so the mountains. Did you yeah, saw those people kind of, too, didn't you? Yeah, I saw them. So it's probably the fisheye effect of the GoPro lens that, that affects, but it was basically a mountain. It was about 1,300 uh, feet. And paramotoring is something I've been doing for the past two or three years. Uh, basically, a paramotor is the motorized version of paragliding, which is basically a parachute that has a wing profile, and you have a big butt fan on your back. I call it my flying camping chair because it kind of feels like that. Uh, I'm just sitting on this chair, and I'm floating the eye in the skies. I have my throttle cable on my right hand. Since I'm left-hand dominant, it's good to have your right hand to use the throttle. If you're right hand dominant, you should use the throttle in your left hand because that hand will be free if you need to maneuver and operate certain things around, you know, your your aircraft. It's a mm. um, it's a specialized license in the ultralight department here in Canada. You need an actual mm. course and license, and you need to be trained for it. In the states, it, it is not uh, required. Anybody can just go out there, buy a paramotor wing, buy a paramotor, and just fly. Um, not recommended. I really recommend you take a class for this. Um, um, what is it? The um, company that I, I really recommend. Uh, I follow Tucker Gott on YouTube, G-O-T-T. And he's the one that actually inspired me to do the paramotor uh, hobby. And it's quite amazing. Mm. It's very cheap. It's very affordable. Uh, well, I just, it's the same word. It's very cost efficient. And I, I just said the same word again. <laughs> it's very fun. It's easy and it's cheap. Um, I mean, I can fly for three hours on 10 liters of gas, which is about two and a half gallons of fuel. But, you know, it's super cheap. And the wing cost me used $2,000, and the engine was about $2,000 as well. That's in Canadian money, so it's actually like 3000 American. It's cheaper than a bike, and I can fly in 3D space. So, I mean, it's, it's really cool. It's very freeing. You must not be scared of heights, but it is a very safe hobby to do. I used to do scuba diving, and I got rid of all my stuff because I thought paramotoring is way more fun safer less hassle to organize and you can almost take off and land almost anywhere if you have a big enough field you can take off anywhere and i don't go to airstrips or um uh, landing pads and stuff i don't really need it so it's it's really cool yeah one of the things with me though is I, i've told this many times before but i feel like i could get into more details about this which is i I am getting into voice acting now, even including Sakura, who has been a part of it too. Um, we do have a teacher, which is Hal's. He is going to be helping us a little bit more after he's done like, with graduation. But I have been doing my own research, and 
I've also been wanting to, you know, make my voice, you know, unique. Which I think your normal voice is already unique as possible, but I would say practicing the ranges that you can do is definitely a beneficial, which got me into singing. Now, yesterday I was singing for like maybe an hour and a half. Just practicing oh, my vocal ranges. Yeah, I do yes. it almost every other day because I don't want to strain my, my vocals too much. It's all. It's very. You have to be careful with that, of course. Yeah, it can be very mm -hmm. harsh. Having good proper vocal warm ups is really important. Mm -hmm. And also great posture. I've learned like learning, uh, you know, keep your your shoulders, you know, relaxed and straight to the parallel to the floor. Also your chin parallel to the floor, and then that helps. So that also is good with singing and voice acting it's that's very good to do i also learned that breathing is a big player into uh, singing most of the time but it also can have its effect with voice acting too because you can run out of breath when you're so intense with what what line you're doing so yes um when you are breathing i learned that it is not to good it's not good to breathe from the chest because that's not a lot of air you breathe from the stomach yeah. So you take as much breath as you can in, and then you, and whether you're singing or voice acting, that's where most of the air should be because it lasts longer. So that yeah. that was pretty cool. But you know, another. Mm -hmm. I think I would... another tip. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wanted to add to your your advice you were given. Uh, another advice that is really good is to stand up as well and slightly contract your ab muscles. Your or stomach mm -hmm. muscles that can help you produce a deeper sound you need to go get that chest voice instead of that head voice as well depending on the type mm -hmm. of acting or voice you need to do so it's very technical it's a lot of people say that they can sing or voice act but it's actually a lot more difficult than it is it sounds like mm -hmm. i've tried doing like a song and stuff and i realized oh my god i am not a singer i need to practice more it's, it's a very difficult, it needs a lot of work, a lot of patience. It's like learning guitar, basically. It's very technical. It takes a lot of effort to make small little progress. Which brings up a good point. I also played guitar for many, many years, and there's oh. always something new to learn. I have mentioned this before. It's just been a while since I have mentioned it. Learning to play guitar was not that hard for me, but that just comes with... Some people learn it faster than others. You know, and I'm not saying yeah. that, you know, just because I learn fast, it doesn't mean that you're better. I'm better than you. I'm just more like saying like certain skills you can learn faster than others. Um, well, some people are born with natural talents. It's it's something that mm -hmm. is very true. Me, I'm really good for building and tinkering. And some people, they just pick up a microphone and they can sing anyone, anything. And they had no training at all. Just, they just got it. And it's absolutely amazing to say to, for me. But I will say this. Talent does not can, does not beat hard work in your craft. The True. I've seen I can use many examples from uh, American football, for example. There's a I can use the guy who was naturally gifted named Johnny Manziel, or his nickname was Money Manziel. Uh, he played for I think uh, Texas A&M College. Very naturally gifted in college football. But when he went to the pros, he had a hard time getting adapted to the foundations of how the NFL played. Because when you're playing college ball, you're not facing the best at each position. There's maybe a few of them. But in the NFL, you're facing the best of the best at each position. And you have to have the mentality developing your craft and also have to be an adult about this study play, study all these things. And he didn't do that. He was a party animal. He didn't take time to learn tape because the best, like you can be the best is like, to me, like someone who is, they know they're talented, but they use their talent to put in the hard work. That's what makes them better amongst the best, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, definitely study be... your craft. Yeah, and sports, they can be a lot more technical than they look. You know, they, it looks like really physical strength and speed, but they actually a lot of, like, mental game going on, like thinking what is the opponent is going to do. You have to anticipate actions, movement, tactics. Like, there's so mm -hmm. many things going on. And it's very taxing on the body, too. It's like most of these people, they play these, they do these sports for a few years, and after that, they retire because their body is just worn out. When I was, a uh, when I... When I play quarterback, for example, there I had to read defense. Uh, like, what are they gonna do? 
what's their move because I have to figure out their play. It's more than just me throwing the ball to a wide open person. Exactly. Um, no. You don't know if the guys are going to blitz it, fake it. You don't know what they're doing, cover two or cover three. I won't get into that, but th that's what I'm saying. Um, but, you know, with us doing the podcast, I can use this. as Well, this is kind of a hobby that you and I do and Whiplash, everybody that's on this team. We built our own crafts, you know. When we, we started, we weren't that great. <laughs> uh, like... If like when you and I, well, when you came to the show and me and Whiplash were already doing this, I could tell you were nervous when you were talking. Yeah, definitely, you were hesitating with questions. You're hesitating with your answers. Sometimes you would go silent. And sometimes, well, we all have brain farts. It happens. But you and I oh and Whiplash have developed our craft with talking on the microphone, which public speaking is not that hard to us anymore. It went pretty well at FWA. I'm not gonna lie. I was really satisfied with the episode. We didn't use too much filler words as well. It's something that's really hard to remove from your vocabulary when you're so used to doing it every single day. It requires a different type of speaking, for sure. But you also have to be very natural. You can't sound robotic, which it takes sure. some time for some people, I get, to develop that mental state like, okay, don't sound <laughs> robotic. I actually have a conversation like you're having a conversation with your friend. That's what I usually tell myself. You know, you know, if I was to use another example who definitely developed their craft is definitely Sakura. She has been awesome. <laughs> Should I, do you want me to mention the beginning or no? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> the first time that oh, she, <laughs> excuse you, <Herpy. laughs> sorry, my soft drink. <laughs> go ahead. But the first time she uh, started when she was on her own when Colton wasn't around she she had a panic attack oh and why <laughs> because we did a recording now correct me if i'm wrong we did a you you thought we did a recording and it didn't record is that what happened i think it was a technical issue uh one of the recording effed up for some reason and she was panic Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what happened. So usually when we record, we have different audio tracks. So when you produce an audio file, uh, a video file, there's always an one single audio track that comes with it. But in OBS and with certain uh, video file formats, you can have actually multiple tracks. Uh, OBS allows you to record up to eight different audio tracks. So now mm. Sakura separates us on the episode in the game, the VR chat game we're in, as one track, and then she records Discord. Uh, the backstage audio as a separate track. So this is how we actually are able to do the commentaries and stuff like that on some of the raw episode footage that you can find on our podcast. Uh, mostly available for a supporter and supporter plus for the raw episodes. Mm -hmm. So what would be like maybe surprising that maybe a lot of furries don't know about our backgrounds besides the ones we just named off? Hmm. It's it's a good question. So I, I have a I do a lot of multiple obbies. I've mentioned I try to I'll try to mention a few of them without going too in details. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, I've I've mentioned this before. Like furries for me is a part of my life. It's a hobby. It's something I do for fun. Um, I like to tinker and make stuff. I do my paramotor, which is I've mentioned earlier. I also play airsoft, and I used to do a lot more cosplay back then. I just been running out of time and you know interest a bit because I need to make new costumes, and it takes a very long time. Um, I used to do scuba diving, uh, that which is great. And my daily work, actually, I work as a security system technician. I've been doing it for eleven years. Basically, I go from clients to clients. I fix their alarm system, camera system, and access control systems. Um, and I also, you know, I have my own toy business that I make products and I design. So I do 3D modeling, printing, manufacturing. 
So, yeah. <laughs> Stop, so, Sakura. Yeah. I saw yeah. that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a business uh, that is for adults, so I can I don't want to go into too much details about that. I'm trying to you know, think I did actually it. what I do outside of that. I did airsoft too as well. I could probably get more into that later. But a lot of people There's a lot didn't of... know about me. There's a lot of drama in the airsoft community, I can tell you that. If you guys think that there's drama in the free fandom and no nowhere else, there's a lot of drama in the airsoft community. <laughs> I've seen grown-ass men with family and stuff starting drama like they were 18, 19 years old kids that were mad Bro, and frustrated you at didn't other call people. your shots. incredible. You didn't call How your shots, you know? dude. You're cheating. <laughs> It's it's actually pretty bad. And I'm like, dude, you're camping near the spawn of the enemy team. How's that fair? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, see yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I dealt with that before. And uh, how about well, you? Is there is there stuff you do on the uh, outside of like the fur community that people don't know about? I well, I used to do hockey. Nobody knew about that. Oh, I, I, I did not a, know about that actually. I I was a left winger. And I was more of the pushover than I was the score, but I could score. I if and to give an explanation of my pushover, I was the guy that always was. I'll fight you <laughs> if you mess with my team. Eesh. Oh, I'm not the fighter. I'm the type of guy that will run away and I will avoid fights. I never got into a fight with somebody. I've never traded fist in my whole life, and I'm scared of that moment. I will always try to talk my out, way out of things. <laughs> I do not condone violence whatsoever, but I have been in a situation where my goaltender on my team was trying to, you know, you know, push the puck to pass, but the opposing team player went up behind him and knocked him face first into the ice. So oh, he didn't see him coming. He didn't see him coming. So me being me, being that, that guy, I literally checked the guy into the... The goalpost, he bounced off of it because I was not happy about Ooh. that. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Those are heavy, too. They're, they're not light. Yeah, they're heavy. But he hit and my they're team. They're anchored on the floor, right? They have, like, little posts in the ice so that they don't slide around. Too oh, much, yeah. Right? They don't, but I knocked it out. <laughs> 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 and I do not condone anybody doing that. That was just the heat of the moment, and I ended up apologizing to that player. He ended up apologizing to the goaltender as well. And, Hold yeah, up. that happened. Mm -hmm. But nobody was seriously injured, thankfully. Because <laughs> I was mad. And, and um, I won't talk more about that. But just know that I've been in fights when it came to sports. <laughs> so... Another thing so I would say... So you, you mm -hmm. enjoy mostly team sports, right? That's mostly what you play? I used to, but then I wanted to venture out and be more creative. Um, okay. More creative thinking. I do enjoy playing the sports sometimes, but the only thing I would say I do now is definitely working out, but I've mentioned that many times. You guys already knew that. Um, yeah. I mentioned that I want want to be a, a writer like write my own book series i have mentioned that before but i would say what definitely helped when it came to writing was taking a lot of criticism from my english professor at the time uh he taught me how to write but i've always been a writer before that but he taught me how to write better and if i'm going to engage an audience to my book it has to be interesting something that hasn't been done but there's a lot of cliches when it comes to stories. You can still use a lot of cliches in books. But you have to, like, engage the audience in the beginning. Something scary is happening. Something big is happening. Get the, the reader engaged. Because if you can't grasp within a minute, the, that book is probably not going to sell. Yeah. But I gotta and, say, you've been you've been writing a lot of the show notes and their meetings inside the podcast. You guys don't see this, but I've noticed like your the way you write, your style. It's really clean. It's really professional. You have a really nice vocabulary, so you definitely got what it needs to start working on a book. I'm sure mm -hmm. you're gonna write up something quite amazing. It's gonna be fun to read as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see just in the show notes that I see here, your structure as a phrase is choice of word and stuff is really good. I gotta give it to you. 
Thank you. But you can also thank my professor. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, be with, <laughs> but there's always more to learn. I would say, you know, he taught me a lot. So, but when it comes to writing and making the, the, the toughest part is writing something to make it like make the reader see a vision of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, you have to project going this to... world. You got to put the the <laughs> the person that reads the book. You have to create an image in their minds, an environment. You have to create a mood, a characters, a feeling. So it's that is the hard part to do. It requires a nice diversity and nice vocabulary of words, mm. which you're already good at. So I have no doubt you're going to do amazing. You know, it might sound cringe to a lot of furries, but before I did this and in my younger youth, I used to role play stories a lot. Not what you think, by the way. <laughs> Safe for work. I, I, I legitimately told people if we're going to write something and some people are we're not always comfortable with it. I get that. But I like legitimate plot stories. Yeah, and I didn't play around sense. with that. <laughs> you guys, you guys, you guys could call me, you know, the... Some people even call me the grammar N word, and by that I mean N A Z. <laughs> <laughs> the grammar N A Z. I'm not gonna spell the whole thing. You know what I'm talking uh, yeah, about. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I need a. I need a. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that whole word because YouTube does not like it. So. <laughs> no, it's fine. People are probably gonna take that I out have, of context. So that's why I wanted to you. spell it. What's up? Do you do other solo sports? So you mentioned you do team sports, but do you do solo sports? I mostly do solo sports, but I'm curious about you. Oh, yes. I wanted to get into MMA. I remember mentioning that, but I haven't really done anything with it yet, which is a solo sport. I guess you They're do... They're so basic, so. Well, do you do like like skiing, rock climbing, oh. bike stuff? You know, sports like these, like solo stuff. Like airsoft is t team, but it can be solo because you can go as a lone wolf in the air, in the woods. But it's mostly a team sport. But like like it's activities like that, skiing. If, you know, if I was to do anything, because I did mention it to my stepfather like a couple of days ago, I wanted to learn how to surf. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I don't know anything about it, but I, he surfed for. For like 10 years and he probably would teach me the the basics that would be cool. i highly if you have the opportunity for it try wake surf that's really cool it's like it's and it requires a special boat it goes really slow and it creates a very steep wake and you have these small little boards and you start off in the water like wake surf uh, like mm -hmm. wakeboarding and then you let go and you're actually wake surfing and it's really fun it doesn't hurt when you crash compared to wakeboard and it's very technical. It's a lot more difficult than wakeboarding, but it is so satisfying. It's very empowering. Mm -hmm. I, I recommend okay. it. If you have the opportunity for it, go for it. Try it. I'm, I'm sure you're going to love it. Very difficult. But once you get it, you get this feeling. It's really hard to explain, but it's very empowering when you figure it out. Highly recommend. <laughs> would, you, would you say that how maybe being a part of the furry community influence our, our personal and professional life? Hmm. I think me, my best example would be my business because my business is mm -hmm. driven by the furry community. Uh, it's a very niche part of the furry community. Um, but in my everyday life, everything is so separated from the furry community that I don't really have much to say. Though, being a content creator and being on the podcast does help me have everyday conversation with people uh having arguments uh discussing uh interesting subjects difficult or easy ones it has been helping me in my everyday life just being on the podcast and mm -hmm. being a content creator uh it's been helping me for my brand as well so it's it's good but i honestly i don't know what else it would probably be those things honestly I would say, like the podcast itself was definitely the the only thing that I'm really doing like uh, like that's within the furry community but uh i would say you know i mentioned singing that i wanted to do some music uh the music i would say is sort of in the community because i only want to like push it out to the furry community not so much outside of it i want to develop that okay. niche so i have you know i write i have written my own songs <laughs> so 
I'm not going to publicly announce them because they're still in the works. We still need to do that. And, you know, Windchime is helping me out with that. So we're going to be doing that and release the singles, like, from time to time to see, to build up some, you know, hype around it. I also yeah. might make, depends, if I have the money to do it and we'll find another way. But I do want to make it a music video. Like, what? animated like the, how the gorillas do it oh yeah it's so cool mm -hmm. so i want to do something it's a lot of work to that regard yeah uh i would say do we have because i know we have goals and we have aspirations right are we like cur i would say we are currently working on to achieve those goals like again writing i want to do that in the future but there's other things that I want to do like you're achieving to be maybe maybe bring your business up a little bit more than usual maybe you want it to be bigger or you want to do more like you're flying I, forget, I keep forgetting what it's called you can always get better <laughs> at that paramotor paramotor you can always get better at that my parachute with my butt fan <laughs> you, should, you know it'd be kind of cool if you can do it Learn skydiving in your fursuit. I would like to see that. Oh, that'd be cool. I know there's people that have done it already. Uh, skydiving would be something I would totally be down for. I've done it once, and I absolutely loved it. I was on the edge of the plane at, like, what, 12,000 feet? And I was like, hell yeah, we're going to jump off a plane. This is so cool. And then my cousin was next to me. He's like, oh, sh I'm going to jump off the plane. What am I doing? <laughs> it's like polar opposite reactions. It would be cool. I would like to do my skydiving license. I would I would totally be down for that. Okay. And well, like I said, like we're achieving like to build up our own uh, personal accolades. Like me writing a book series and uh, music and do voice acting. These are things that are outside of the community. So that's why I'm trying to keep the topic. Like what are we doing to, to achieve those things? Like I mentioned yeah. like building you know making my voice stronger making my vocals stronger but what what about that are you going to get a coach kind of thing or like do you have any other aspirations that you want to do that nobody knows yet but you're building on building on it right now i'm actually i would love to get more involved into drama play singing and dancing um uh, i have very i have i'm very comfortable with dancing learning dance technique and stuff i'm a really quick learner I would like to learn to sing more. Uh, it's something I'm definitely into. And acting is really fun. I've been, I mean, when you're a cosplayer, you kind of have to act a character. So spending an hour and a half have being this character that you play is really fun it's another way to get your mind out of your everyday life to take a break because you don't think about yourself anymore you're playing as this character and i just did a, a comedy play recently which went fantastic and i played as roscoe this mustang hispanic horse that idolizes antonio banderas and a lot of people came to me after the show and they said dude man you were my absolute favorite and i did a bit uh, of dancing i did uh, a little bit of singing i was like okay you know what let's do this my ultimate goal is i want to be in a musical i really want to do mm -hmm. this so i've been experimenting so i know how to dance i have background in that i've done professional dancing uh acting i don't really have much experience other than cosplaying as master chief from halo 3 which is one of the costumes i have um singing i don't really have much experience or talent i did try to make my first uh my first cover it's a 25 second clip it went okay-ish. I realized that I wasn't on pitch on every single note, but it's nothing that a tiny little bit of Melodyne, Melodyne cannot fix. But it's, it, it, you know, it gives me an idea on how it works. And I might actually get mm -hmm. into uh, learning some singing, uh, going yeah. into, oh my God, taking some singing courses. And I'm, I've actually signed up for a comedy play and I'm going to audition this summer in August. I'm probably going to sing um colors of the wing win by pocahontas it's really in my range of voice so i'm gonna see how it goes i'll talk about it maybe later in the ep in the future episodes i see how it goes keep you updated oh, okay. but that's most definitely the my next big project i have going on give us your best master chief impression 
So here's the thing. I was kind of silent. I didn't say anything because Master Chief doesn't talk <laughs> a lot, so I didn't really voice. But uh, yeah, I don't even know a quote. I could try to uh, what code? This oh is Spartan God. 117. This is Spartan 117. Pending. Sir. Airdrop. Blanky. Watch out, Himbo. We can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to mic you have to mute your microphone. But that was a good impression, though. Good job. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you need a weapon? What are you looking at? Weapon loaded. I don't know what to say. I don't know the quotes. I haven't played the game for such a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to like think of um, what Child things did he say? Uh, what what is the one thing he always said? Like it just never gets old. It's the thing I, I he said. Yeah, well, there's a lot and not a lot at the same time. It's it's really weird. But every time he spoke, it's very powerful lines and stuff that meant it. So, uh, we'll make I'm, it. We'll make it. I'm saving Cortana at all costs. I don't even know. He, he's he, got a really deep voice. He is like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's go. Let's keep going. Sudden death. You are sus. <laughs> Triple kill. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's the announcer of the multiplayer, but you know where we're going with that. Um, you know, some people probably ask, like, how do we, like, balance our life in the furry community with our own personal or, pers or professional pursuits, you know? That's a good question, you know? Like, what do we do with that, right? It's it's pretty easy. I don't just I just don't mix stuff. I just when I hang out with my my colleagues, I talk about work. When I hang out with my political friends, talk about the. When I talk with my friends at the restaurant or my friends, mm -hmm. well, everybody knows a bit of everything. So all my different groups of friends, they know that I'm all these in these other different groups of friends. And some people they end up asking me stuff about my different groups. And some of them they actually kind of want to join or they want to they want to ask questions. So, mm -hmm. I keep it separate, but I don't at the same time. I just keep people aware. So, if they're like, oh, why don't you talk to me as much? Or, why, what are you doing? Why are you so busy? Then I'm not going to lie to them. I'm just going to be honest. I'm like, okay, well, I started, you know, doing a podcast in the furry community. And they're like, oh, what's the furry mm -hmm. community? So, I give them the explanation. I, I always give the same when I was interviewed at t on television. Um, but it's I I I, I kind of keep it separate. But I I do mention what's going on, but they're they're super chill about it, and they some of them actually ask me a lot of questions about it. Okay, before I can answer my question, I would like to get to yes. the question of the week, which this question is what goals do you have outside of the furry fandom? Now we have a couple of answers. We'll start out with Justin. He said, "My goal is to make a better computer for myself." Also live my life to the fullest because you may never know when it'll be your last breath it's pretty good to it live is by very true mm -hmm. and always if you wanna, live your uh, life to the fullest but i will mention this justin if you want to do anything if you want to get better you know tinkering with hardware take an a plus certification that'll be a great thing to learn um yeah. and the next question was from trick uh my goal is to breed isopods and create awesome tanks with beautiful plants in them. I love working with bugs and plants, so it is fun to match those two hobbies together to create enclosures. That sounds like fun. Wow, I, that's know, really cool. I've never heard people about that hobby. That's really interesting. That is a cool. very interesting one. That's pretty good, That trick. is very unique. I'm going to give you points for uh, being unique and different from everybody else. Good job. Really proud of you. You know what? Hold on good a second. Boy. Trick, can you come... <laughs> Can you come here for a second? You want to come here? Yeah, since this is the oh, yeah. first time we... You don't need to speak. It's fine. <laughs> but come here. Yes, come here. You don't need to get behind <laughs> me. Get in front. Come here. So we have a tradition. <laughs> people up. So, oh, goodness. So we have a tradition. So we have a tradition. We always give new supporters plus head pets. Since... It <laughs> Adorable. You want to go up to stream? Go ahead. Come here. I'll give you a big oh hug. Oh my goodness! Hello. Yay! Hello. Oh my goodness, Aww. Hello. 
<laughs> Adorable. Nice to meet you. Well, oh, thank you for your nice. support. We really appreciate it. Of course. We do appreciate that. Y'all are so cool. <laughs> How long have you been doing that hobby of yours? Um, actually a whole year now. I was looking through my Google images and I realized, oh my god, it's been a, a year since I got my first tank and my first set of like plants and god, mm. I have over seven different species now. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's, that's really awesome. cool. Well, go, you, you can go back over there. Well, I'll definitely talk to you a little bit later about this, <laughs> but... <laughs> Anyways, guys, <laughs> thank you for your support. Hobby. I've never heard about that stuff. It's really I know, cool. it's pretty unique. I really like that. That is really cool. But anyways, guys, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell. If you hit the notification bell, it will notify you with each upcoming video and also with our shorts. Uh, follow us on our audio platforms and leave us a rating as this will help us out a lot join our discord and our telegram chat links for all these are in the link tree down below in the description <laughs> well hey top dogs fan are you ready for an elevated fan experience discover exclusive perks by joining our server subscription on discord or patreon for only $2.99 a month become a podcast supporter unlock raw unedited podcast episodes access supporter meetups and receive a unique custom pie emoji among other special goodies craving more then level up to our podcast supporter plus for just 5.99 a month participate in episode voting share your feedback and experience the excitement of being in our live audience plus get an, an insider speak of our upcoming plans and merchandise Remember, your support is the fuel to our fire. And while these subscriptions are optional, they significantly help us grow. So join us now and let's make Top Dog's journey even more phenomenal together. Hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I gotta be that. Yeah, I was always the pump, the pump guy in sports. Like I was the guy that is like, Whoops. we're gonna kick some ass. We're gonna whip that team's ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll get the, the pump motivator. <laughs> Give him a... <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you see my hands? If you see my fingers, you gotta see my fingers. I'd be like, you see this? I would put them in my mouth. We're gonna we're gonna eat a W. That means we're gonna win. <laughs> oh my god, that is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the speaker I stole that from an <laughs> actual professional football player because like, that is <laughs> clever. Whoops. Oh, that's really funny. I've never heard that one. I had to oh, show yeah, you that dropped. video. It's funny. It's oh, fine. I'd love to. <laughs> um but anyway, yeah. I, I was going to ask you, do you have, like, any other, maybe some future projects that you want in the plan to do? Like, besides the ones uh, we named off? Yeah, other than the being a part of the, um, part of the musical, um, I do have plans to release new products on my store. Uh, the Amicus product I've been selling has been selling, like, hotcakes, and I'm, it's been a month, and I'm still, like, nowhere halfway done to fulfilling everything. Uh, but other projects I want to do, um, mm -hmm. I, not much really. I don't have anything. We were working on a child project and it kind of failed, uh, my husband mm -hmm. and I. So we're trying to gather up our money, gather, get our funds together, uh, get our financial situation sorted, and maybe try again maybe next year um we'll see how that goes uh jet has been growing exceptionally well he's very healthy he's very energetic he's about to turn nine month old so he's officially older than his brother thunder mm -hmm. and my oh i think he crashed ladies and gentlemen so i think oh god uh, he turned into a pretzel <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have to Are reboot you good? My, my thing. Come on. Oh God. Are you? You. There's might you be teleported a. Teleported into the ceiling. ceiling. Uh, I'm just gonna have to rejoin the instance. Technical issue. Okay, that's fine. So I'll I'll just talk about my thing. Okay. So if I was to name any future projects that I wanted to do, that would be. I definitely would like to be involved with another creative idea that I was considering, which would be, I don't know how to word it correctly. I'll, would you consider that maybe, because I want to try to do it just for practice, because I don't know. Would you consider like WWE wrestling? I know it's entertaining and it's not real, but I was thinking about learning the, the basics on that in the future. I think that would be kind of fun hey, because sure I want to get in better shape. And since I still have my athletic abilities, 
I would like to do that more if I can. But you don't really get into that kind of field without busting your ass. And because that means you have to hold your other projects to the side. So that's a maybe, you know, because I definitely want to work on my book, work on my music, work. Most, most of my focus is definitely going to be in voice acting. So <clears throat> I would say that. But go on with your uh, future project that you wanted to talk about before you were having oh. that huge lag spike. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, my, my face tracking crashed, but it's okay. Uh, no, I was actually done. That was pretty much it that was going on. Um, Thunder, uh, Jed is officially older than his brother Thunder, and he's mm -hmm. going really well. Uh, we started doing Mr. B&B and Airbnb uh, on, mm -hmm. you know, to help the pay the bills and meet people from all around the world, which is fine. It's mm -hmm. fun. Uh, other than that, I don't really have much. Where we, I know my husband is going to is undergoing a lawsuit uh, with the school board uh, for his teacher that sexually abused him when he was younger. He wrote a book about this, and if we get enough money out of this, we might actually renovate our backyard and get like uh, redo the 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 grass because there's a lot of weeds, and we might replace our broken pool with a uh, dug up pool and a new deck and stuff like that. So we might have that project coming up. We don't know how it's going to go. It might take another year or two. We'll see. Well, that wouldn't be necessarily a bad idea. Yeah. That wouldn't be. I would say another thing. Um, let's say this. And I'm going to ask you this, and it's definitely a good question, which is how has like being a part of the podcast influenced your personal growth? Like, What skills or lessons have you learned from podcasts and that you've applied elsewhere in your life? I gotta say the art of speaking is really something I've been, you know, you know, having conversation, discussing, avoiding filler words. It's been very helpful for having discussion over the phone. Um, also, it's been very helpful for making content. Um, also, try to be more, I try to be more self-aware on the amount of speaking I do. I am a heavy speaker. I speak a lot and I talk a lot. I'm probably doing You will not shut up. <laughs> I don't shut up. So I'm trying. I'm I'm very self-conscious. More, I'm a lot more conscious on the time I take mm -hmm. to speak words. So I tend to speed up because I don't want to take over, uh, too much time. But when I speed up, I kind of mess up my words, mostly because you know English is a second language. I'm very fluid with it, but still requires a bit more brain power uh, than speaking my mother language. Uh, I would uh, say. When it, when it comes to speaking, you do, like, if you're going to speak fast, you definitely want to sound more clear, you know, don't speak too fast with a point that you can't even understand it like that. You got to learn how to articulate because it doesn't sound like you're talking like this. You know what I mean? Nobody can keep up with that. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's just an example. Um, when I speak, I practice my words because, you know, that comes with, you know, learning voice acting. You have to be very clear. And I learned, I, I practiced tongue twisters. Has anybody ever heard of tongue twisters? Do you guys know what uh, that is? We did that at, during my drama play. My comedy play, we tongue, did practice tongue twisters. Tongue twister skill, what it teaches you is learning how to articulate. And you sound more clear when you're speaking. And I definitely have been working on that, which I should have named off. But it was definitely one of the few things I learned how to do. Now, I can't think of a tongue twister now. I would need to actually read one. But because of it, it does help develop when you're speaking, like, your tongue muscle. So you would sound more clear. You can also learn how to speak fast and not sound like you're mumbling. Because you can still hear what I'm saying without going yeah. too fast or too slow. So that does cool. help. I really enjoy that. So that's why I'm practicing other skills when it comes to speaking. I would say we're not shy anymore talking to a public crowd. I think yeah, we went beyond that. It's, and I was kind of worried about that with you because you've never done it before. But then I realized, wait a minute, he's done political sh like talks and interviews. No, well, I, I don't have a lot of background in it. The political is my husband that took care of it. I was on one podcast that I was a guest of, and I was interviewed on TV once. And mm. they do a lot of editing, right? So they cut up all the stuff, the filler words and all that. They remove all this stuff. So it's it looks really good and professional, but I didn't have that much experience. 
though mm-hmm. I'm comfortable having conversation about delicate subject with people. I can talk about literally anything, even subjects that I'm not comfortable with. I'm able to still have a discussion about it. Uh, Uh, But, you know, when you were mentioning speaking quickly and being understood, fun thing I like to do, I love doing karaoke and I love to do Eminem songs. He's one of my favorite rappers. And I can do, when I'm gone from Eminem, complete, it's a five Uh minute song. I can do the whole thing, karaoke, without looking at the screen and people can understand. Mm -hmm. And I really you like to do lose yourself eminem speaks really fast but you can understand every single word he's saying like this guy is amazing uh-huh. yeah it's like when somebody's speaking fast i can think of one song you know that song by malcolm moore called can't hold us you ever heard of that song Ooh. i'm probably i can't recall quickly like that he's like return to the mech and you know it starts out like that and then he kind of like goes from let's say how do i say this it's very fast in the beginning, so if I was to word it correctly, uh, his lyrics, like, it's mostly the melody at first. Hey, but he says, and he's like, return to the mag, like, get him what it is, what it does, what it isn't. And then he says, looking for a better way to get out of bed instead of getting on the internet, it's chicken to hit me, get up. Wow, that That's, was quick. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. And... You know, speaking fast like that takes skill and not mess up your lines. I'm still yeah, having sure a does. little... I, I'm having a difficult time still learning how to do it. Maybe one day I'll be able to sing the the Rap God song that Eminem done. Yeah. <laughs> if you can do that, that'd be kind of impressive. Uh, but there is another guy that I think is way better than Eminem. You have not heard of him. Uh, it's this, What's the song called? Imaginary Places. I'll have to tell you that song because that that dude sings fast throughout the entire song it is insane wow. uh, i'll show you um but well anyways. i know rap god has won a guinness world record uh for mm-hmm. the fastest amount of words per minute uh, mm-hmm. he beat it and he releases a new song and it beats it and it's rap god was uh, oh my god that was so impressive i don't know how he does that yeah he does backflip with his tongue man <laughs> absolutely crazy i'm still learning how to use my tongue don't take that out of context <laughs> <laughs> i will trust me i will <laughs> uh now so there is many things that we have to overcome you know learning things that we're not used to you know, me taking in the position of lead on certain things that I was not prepared to take. I would say, can we sh- like can we share like maybe a story about a personal or like maybe a professional challenge we faced and how we overcame it? I would say recently, you know, with the the new responsibilities I have, it's definitely a learning curve, and I'm willing to learn. The thing is, though, is that I, I always say. Failure does not mean that everything falls apart. Uh, uh, Failure is a learning curve, and I believe failure is one of the greatest teachers that you can ever use. Now, since it was my first time learning to lead people, something that I'm not usually comfortable with because I don't usually like to make decisions without the team. but I believe, you know, with time and practice and a little bit of being taught how to do it, because I have someone in my family that already knows how to do business and know how to lead people and know how to talk. Like if I wanted to present an idea, right? Whatever that might be, I would need to give a reason why this is good and how it would benefit you guys now if you guys don't agree i would have a backup saying well we can do this alternative i can't just say i like this idea and this is why we're going to do it i can't just say that i had to give a reasons why it would be beneficial to you guys and even if it wasn't good i would still have a backup saying well here's an alternative and i explain that you know well, what i mean well, i think it yeah i think it's good when you're trying to project like present an op like an idea or a subject to somebody it's good to present them with options to you which you kind of decide okay this is the idea i think it could lead us this place we could do this and it would bring us that or we could do this and that and usually people they will take you know the first option you brought up mm-hmm. 
or they don't want it, they will bring another option to the table. So you're actually bringing up the fact that you're open-minded to everything. And I, th- I think that's a good um, qualification for a good leader is somebody that's like, okay, here's what I want to do. This is how I believe we could do it. We could do it this way if you want. I'm, I'm open-minded to anything. And usually if you have, if you, you build your point and you back up your argument really easily, people, they will just follow you along. I would say one of the things that most people have to understand is when it comes to being a leader, sometimes you cannot let your emotions get to you. You know, nope. sometimes, especially when it comes to business. And that's what we do, right? I cannot, no matter my feelings, let my feelings dictate because your feelings cannot dictate the direction of where you want your business to go. It, because it's more personal, yeah. not what's good for it. You know, don't let your personal feelings dictate the direction. It, it just doesn't work. Like, I get it. We have bad days, right? But there comes a... But there but there has been many times, you and I, and I've mentioned this many times, have been on the show when we're not mentally okay, you know? It happens. Me For me, was when I lost Jet, was probably uh, Thunder, and I'm still struggling. He passed away in September, and we're in July. I'm still struggling with this. But I showed up to the episode, and t- to me, it was it was my way to think about somebody, something else. You know, I was so into the situation, and I didn't feel like coming on the episode. But like, no, I got responsibilities. I have a duty I have to fulfill. Let's do it. And I ended up having a really good time, and it was really fun to talk to you guys and see the team and the supporters. And it gave me a mental break from the situation. So when you're struggling in life with stress or anxiety or depression, even though you don't feel like doing certain things, you don't have the mental energy, you know, sometimes your friends will try to drag you someplace. I mean, you don't know. Maybe it will go perfectly well. Maybe it won't do anything at all. But at least you tried, you know? Yeah. So don't be too closed-minded to stuff like that. I know it's easier said than done because I remember when I had my depression, I didn't want to do anything. I wanted to stay home. But Mm -hmm. I'm glad I actually, Mm -hmm. during that episode, I forced myself to stay and be there. Because, you know, because the people, like, rely on you, right? To get yeah, something done, do. you have to be there. And there's been many times I've done that. And that's what, what it means to be being an adult sometimes. Where I don't want to go to work, but I have responsibilities to take care of this house. Yeah. Take care of the people in my life. Take care of your dog. These things all come down to your decision. And if you let your feelings get in the way of that, doing your responsibilities, then it kind of like messes up everything that, as a whole, you know, yeah. cause they rely on you, you know, jet relies on you to feed them, you know, take them out and stuff like that. If you don't have the, the finances to take care of them, it's not going to be good for him. You know what I mean? Nope. And you know, it's sometimes life can be very stressful and pressuring, but this is why you, if you're struggling, ask for help. Nobody's going to judge you or like shame you for not being able to fulfill your responsibilities. If you have issues, communicate, talk with people. They're going to help you out. I know if like, because my husband and I were in the plans on having kids, right? And mm-hmm. I know we've talked with some couples that they were having a kid. And at one point, like, okay, I cannot stand. They, they were talking about their daughters. I'm like, I, I can't do this anymore. Hold her because I'm going to do something I'm not going to be proud of in a few seconds. So he was saying to his wife, look, I'm not doing well. I can't handle this. Can you take care of the situation? And she's like, yes, yes, I'll take care. Go take a break. Go play video games for an hour or two and then come back when you feel better. You know, it's we all got responsibility. Sometimes we don't feel like doing certain things, but you got to do them because it's, it's the way life is. That's the part of being an adult. It sucks. Yes, but you also have a lot of freedom. You can do whatever you want. But it's not always easy, and don't feel ashamed to ask for help and talk to your friend about a situation if it's not going well. I would also say care about you, thing. they will help out. True. Now, I do have to say one thing. If you're going to stick to your guns about your opinion, you might as well stick with it. Do not back out of it just because someone doesn't agree with you. That It just means that... Well, you know, I don't necessarily it like that. It... 
Um, because if I tell you I'm going to do something, but I don't do it, then you're not going to take my word seriously. Does that make sense? Sure. What I'm trying to say? That's what yeah. I mean. If I tell you I'm going to do this, I really mean I'm going to do it. Yeah. So I, yeah, th I think what you mean is stay true to your values. I think that, that's what you're yes. trying to say. It's of okay course, to have yes. an opinion and people can try to change your opinion or what you should do. As long as it fits with your values, that's perfectly fine. If you feel like mm -hmm. acting a certain way or doing certain things is not part of your values and you're and people are trying to have a discussion and they're not respecting that, they don't have to agree with everything you're saying. And it's just maybe mm -hmm. considered what type of friend they can bring you. I mean, you can have issues with certain aspects of their life, but you could get along with others as well. Well, me and so, you, uh, we have respect relationships. We, you and I have relationships, right? And our partners don't think the way we do. Sometimes I don't agree with my no. partners doing this, and the, your husband probably doesn't agree with when you're doing something else. Just difference of opinion. Um, or <laughs> well, something might be a big deal. <laughs> you can tell me about that later. <laughs> well, I, you tell me about a that phrase. Later. Sometimes, well, well like, I think it's, it's, it would be good for the episode, but sometimes I get into an argument with my husband. I'm like, I disagree with that course of action. I don't think we should do that. And then I actually go my way and it doesn't work. And he goes like, see, I told you, you should have done this because boom, boom knows better. And I'm like, yes, boom, boom knows better. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> and then we actually get a laugh out of it. Aww. <laughs> boom boom knows better that's the thing boom, boom. <laughs> so oh my god for the last question i was gonna say this this is usually an interesting question where do we see ourselves in the next five or ten years and how does your involvement in the furry community and this podcast fit into that vision in five years hopefully i'm gonna be a dad for real and i'm gonna uh -huh. be holding my own child that is number one mm -hmm. number two my business will have grown to a point where i don't really need to do as many hours being a uh, security system technician that would be great mm -hmm. and on the podcast we have grown so much to a point where we can almost do a living out of it so i could actually do podcast episodes and do the business and i don't have to work anymore that would be really cool i mean i love my work i love what i do mm -hmm. and there's a lot of social advantages that come with it health insurance uh retirement funds and stuff a lot of amazing things but being mm -hmm. your own boss is i gotta say it's really fun it is mm -hmm. it's not stressful but it is because you're very hard on yourself so you have to learn to take a break which so far i'm i'm managing pretty well mm -hmm. um but yeah, I think the podcast would be something I really want to see. I want to see my content grow a little bit more. It's really fun to have those community events where I'm talking with people that, you know, commented on TikTok that, hey, I would like to meet you and hang out. Can you do that? I'm like, yeah, sure. Just add me as a friend. We'll talk, you know. So it, yeah. it's really fun to interact with the community. I, it really keeps me going. It keeps my motivation and my hard work going. So it's it's, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm having a good time, and I'm looking forward to what the future brings us. And with all the supporters that keep rising every mm -hmm. single day, every month, it's absolutely fantastic. And thank you guys so much. And even if you're not a supporter or supporter plus, just listening to the episode and sharing with your friends and family, it's, it's already more than enough. We, we're mm -hmm. really grateful. What about you? With, what do you see yourself in five or ten years? I have my five own vision years. of where... Well, I do have my own vision with Top Dog's podcast. But I'm also having a vision for the Top Dog's production team. Like, that, the company side of it all. Now, yes, keep in mind, those, those two things are different. And learning how to be an entertainer versus learning how to be a businessman is definitely a challenge for me. But I am taking the steps to, you know, build that up, you know, build those skills to learn how business works, um, learn to have a plan because, you know, it's important to know what you're talking about, like what you want to do and you present to the team, you know, this is what I want to do on the company side. And, but this is, and then I have for the podcast, I was like, this is what I want to do for the podcast. Because, you know, podcast to me is its own thing. The company is different, you know? Yeah. So, 
you can present like the teams can present ideas and i like where things are going of course you know and there's going to be you know times you know uh not every plan will go according that sometimes some might have to wait until later but i do like the idea what i have for my vision for the the company which is i want you guys to you know think for yourselves of what your vision could be and we put it all together in one does that make sense yeah. that's yeah. my thing uh definitely work on my voice acting hopefully i might be doing projects by then because you know that's what i really am focusing on right now and then later down the road maybe in the 10th year mark maybe even lower than that write my book series I was going to mention that, your book series. You told me about the concept of your book series, and I thought it was really interesting how you, mm-hmm. you were... Can I mention a few things about it? Sure. Well, go ahead. So, one of the most interesting thing you told me about is we. it's, it, it's like a futuristic kind of post-apocalyptic world where uh it's basically like furries so you would have you told me there was like the all the omnivore uh species the carnivore species and the herbivore species uh, species and how they learn to live together and having this law system so that they don't you know carnivores don't eat herbivores and stuff like that you had a really I have a interesting law concept. System. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's my a own whole political law system. Yeah, and there's like politics. underground. Yeah, I thought that concept was really interesting. I hope you're gonna explore and go deeper into that because I think mm-hmm. you got a story that could lead up to something really great. So yeah, I'm actually, mm-hmm. I'm actually excited to read. If you're willing to share some of your progress in the future, I'd love to read them. Uh, of course, I w- seeing your art, sub- how you write, and your ideas. I think if you put these two together, it's going to come up as something truly amazing. And I wish you the best of success on that project. Of course, and I hope you get to be a dad actually, and make sure. I hope I so will too. show up. <laughs> I will show up at your house to congratulate you if that happens. So, oh, that's sweet. It's been very I difficult. Need a, <sighs> I, but the first thing first, I need to get a passport. I haven't applied for that yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, it's really weird because everybody, almost every Canadian, they have passport. But I've noticed not a lot of Americans have their passport. It's weird. But anyways, guys, that concludes today's episode. I hope you learned a lot from this, and we'll be seeing you guys next week on a new episode. Until then, have a good night, and stay awesome. Bye. Take care, guys. Yeah. Have a good one. Woohoo! We love you. Yay. <laughs> That's a wrap. Okay. God, that went fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah! Motherfucker. I didn't even know you were Canadian. Oh, really? Oh, hey, uh, Ryan, Ryan, I'm not sure if you read the podcast app, so once Sakura says we're recording, you can't join at that point. No, usually uh, either Howl or what's his name uh, says that I'm, I'm I'm able to come in and just just watch. Well, t- well what... um, for, uh, for, for future references, no. take some time to actually look at the podcast ops channel. Yeah, because no when someone Because, like, uh, before... Before this was a problem, I, I guess I, I didn't know it was a problem before. Uh, before, I just it was a whiplash or howl or someone told me, like, yeah, you can just pop in and just hit, and that's it. And they're just like, listen. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know. Oh, cause, yeah, like, no. <laughs> no, I didn't know at all. Is that new? Is that that new? is a new rule that was just applied, yeah. Yeah, last week. Okay, okay last I didn't know week about we it. had a meeting about that. It's okay. okay You'll I didn't know, know for about next it. time. All right. Also, Arcadec, come here, motherfucker. Next time, next time, when you send me a reference, don't send me one with your dongle, motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't know. Sorry. <laughs> fuck. I gotta make a plushie oh for you. God. I'm not gonna make a fucking fuck doll. <laughs> if you want, no, I can just do that too. Delete the. Well, I no. Well, we can talk business no. later. But... <laughs> oh god. Oh god. I can get, I, I, I can get, get you one of those. I can make. I can. You got caught in 4K. You got caught in 4K. Also, look, I like your robotic gauntlet. (laughs) Oh, cool. We're too nice. Awesome. I met. Well, I like well, just, just, That's just funny. I like how you just admitted to it. We're still recording, guys. <laughs> Hold on, hey, ready? You doing okay? Put your fist up. Put your fist up. Hey.
There you go. Whoa, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I can't do that. I do have the mesh for it. I could do something Every like that. Cool. I want to think I'm making stuff for you guys. Look at this shit. I'll send this to you. I'll take a picture. Okay, I used to have props <laughs> on my avatar. Like my previous avatar had a bunch of props. I can. Are you in quest? I'll send that to you in the. I'm um, okay. via a Valve index. Oh, I can. I can proudly say that now. Okay. Uh, no problem. <laughs> Why so rainbow? So you look, this is my oh, old hand I, I had on really my like avatar. Rainbows. I've had this character since I was So like this hand has a bunch of accessories. 13, uh, so. Accessories. <laughs> uh, well, I do got a good question. Where cool. in the world does it say that? I'm only even like looking at the Top Dogs podcast yeah. myself. Did I remove it? <laughs> I actually have a Big first Big giant skittle. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm uh, I think I took a pic, I think I took a screenshot of the avatar that I'm currently making. So that I have to say on the walls. I mean. Oh God, not the pentagram. Oh, guys! Oh, guys! But anyways, we need to take a picture. Really, Arkadan.